so that's not normal. Like in the, in the American league, in the NHL, like it's more of like, we're in this together as a team and Russia tends to be like, let's, let's see who we can blame for this. <laughs> What's going on guys. This is Brain from advancement hockey advising here. And today we have a good interview here with pro hockey player, Dan Sexton. So for those of you who don't know Dan, basically he's played a good number of places, but he grew up in Minnesota he played high school hockey there. And then he went on to play in the NAHL and the USHL as well. And then from there, he committed to Bowling Green uh, State University, which is NCAA D1 hockey. And from there, once he was done there, he moved on to the AHL. He played some stints in the NHL as well. And now he's currently in the KHL. He's been playing there for like nine, 10 years. So Dan, uh, he's been around. He's, uh, you know, he's a great voice. You guys will see he's, he's a really good talker and he has some really good uh, gold nuggets of advice to give you guys here. So I really urge you guys to pay attention in this video because he really drops some knowledge bombs. Now, before we dive into the video here, as always, what would our videos here be without us asking you to absolutely destroy that like button, right? And if you're new here and if you haven't seen this kind of content before and you want to keep seeing it, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward. All right, guys, enough of that. Let's dive right into the interview. All right, so Dan, glad to have you on board here. How are you doing today? I'm doing very good. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. So let's dive right into the first question here. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, your your hockey career, and everything uh, everything about you? Yeah. So my name's Dan Sexton. I've I've been playing professionally for 13 years between the NHL, AHL, and KHL for the most part. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm from Apple Valley, Minnesota. Went to school at Bowling Green University, Bowling Green State University for two years before I uh, left there and uh, played juniors with the Sioux Falls Stampede in the USHL and also the Wichita Falls Wildcats in the NAHL uh, after high school. So that was kind of the, and then yeah, I played high school hockey all the way through graduation. For a Minnesotan, that's kind of relatively standard way to go. And then, and then usually you know, you see, you try your luck in juniors and see where that takes you. And so that's kind of the rough outline of, of what I've done kind of working backwards. Cool. So can you talk a little bit more about your, you know, your junior career, your college career, and then your pro career, kind of how it like the similarities between all three of them and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. I mean, the juniors was a, a, for a huge step up for me from, from high school. I played my first year in the NAHL people, you know, probably know is like kind of a tier two. And I went there and did did well. And then I got drafted by a team in the tier one, uh, Cedar Rapids Rough Riders. And then went to tryouts, ended up kind of making the team, but kind of not. They ended up cutting me in the summertime. So I was available again to go back to the NAHL. And then from there, Sioux Falls picked me up and I played there the entire season. And we ended up winning the, ch the championship. And I had a really good playoffs, led the league in goals. And that kind of got me my division one scholarship to Bowling Green. Uh, kind of there at the end of that season. And then I took that and uh, had a good freshman year and then a really good sophomore year. But, but yeah, like the, the di main difference for, for, for juniors was just like, you know, you're wearing a hat, you're wearing a visor or not, but uh, a lot of guys are wearing visors. The game, there's more fighting. Uh, there's um, guys that are just from all over the place as opposed to just from Minnesota. So you get a, you're kind of getting the best players from each, each of their hometowns and uh, their States. And so it's just the competition's really high. And, uh, it took me a while to adapt to the USHL, a couple months at least. And uh, but once I did, it was it was really a great league, super super good hockey. And a lot of the guys are committed Division One already. Um, and the jump from junior to college was actually smaller, I thought, than from high school to junior. For me personally, I think it's different for everyone. Some guys do great in juniors, and and maybe in college there's some things that provide uh, obstacles. But for me, once I got, I felt like the USHL really helped the adversity I faced there helped me in college. And then um, obviously college to the NHL or AHL is, is also a really big jump, but you know, not, not so, you know, not much more substantial than, than for me, like high school, just to like the USHL. So for everyone, it's different. And for me, I think I started to kind of gain muscle gain uh, size when I was about 19 or 20, I was kind of a late bloomer. So for me, maybe that's why high school to junior was so hard because I still wasn't fully kind of developed. Yeah, I noticed that for a lot of guys, it's either the jump from, you know, AAA or prep high yep. school, whatever it is, to junior. That's the biggest, uh, the, the toughest part in their careers or the jump from junior to college. It really depends when you really start to develop physically, I'd say, is the, the biggest, um, you know, the hardest part of making those jumps there. So I, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's hard. Like being a smaller guy is tough, but then 
if you're smaller, but then you start to gain some size and you already kind of have the tools that you needed as a smaller guy, but then you gain some size later on, it, it definitely helps. And, and if you're a guy that's bigger right away, and then you maybe don't have to develop the skills as much early, and then you people start to catch up size wise, I think that could be another reason why it gets tougher for some guys. And it's just, it's, you know, it's not something you can barely even control, but I think everyone, you know, the guys that end up not making it professionally are probably the guys that run into a, a level that they just can't seem to kind of get over the hump. And I fortunately was able to, to keep doing that. And that's really what it's all about is finding the, finding the level you need to be at. And then, you know, getting above that level and, and staying there uh, until you move on to the next one. For sure. For sure. And you mentioned like, you know, you didn't make that, that USHL team initially, or you were kind of in between and you faced some adversity there. Can you tell the viewers a little bit more about how you dealt with that adversity, how you found yeah. that? You push through? Yeah. I mean, I'll never forget, you know, like where I was, I got a call saying like, we're going to move on from you, you know, this and that. And I, I was like, okay, well, that was devastating to me. Like I went to the tryout, didn't do great, but like thought having a really good season in the NHL would gave me a little bit more, you know, of a chance. So when I got cut, you know, they kind of told me that I was going to be a fourth line guy at best. And so, you know, it wasn't a great situation there. Then finally they decided just to let me go. And then luckily, you know, through the grapevine, the coach Kevin Hartzell and USHL found out that I was still available and they were willing to give me a tryout kind of in season, like to start the season. I kind of had to like do a little preseason tryout, which is at the Buck Bowl and like the first few games of the regular season. And luckily I was, luckily I made the team still wasn't playing good. I don't know what they saw in me, but they gave me a chance. And um, I mean, I, I thank Kevin Hartzell a few times for that because without that, I don't really know where I end up, you know? So, um, but yeah, the, the, the moments of leading up to that were tough, just getting caught for the first time, really that sort of thing. That was tough. Yeah. I mean, you just kind of keep it simple. You know, you don't get too ahead of yourself. I just kind of was like, well, let's go back to the NHL and, and dominate and then see what happens. But I mean, I, if only I knew, like, you know, I didn't really know what was going to be next and it's probably better that way. Right. So um, I just kind of kept plugging along, kept working super hard on getting stronger and uh, skating and working out and just being as good of a player as I could possibly be. And that was really all I was worried about. I think too many people get caught up in this guy's doing this and that guy's doing that. And luckily for me, I was able to just to be like, I'm only worried about myself because these other guys are so far above me that I don't even want to think about them. And that, and then once I, you know, got to the USHL or got to the USHL and was playing really well at the end of the season, that's probably the first time I started to feel like I could even make comparisons with other guys that are division one players. And I still try not to, because, you know, I, I don't think it would have done me any good. No, no. Comparison's definitely the enemy. I would say it's, and it's so easy, especially with social media now to see what your buddies are doing and everything guys mm -hmm. are really succeeding, but yeah. it's important for everyone to know that we all have our own path and everybody yeah. develops at a different rate, you know? And yeah. I, I think the most important thing you probably did was block out all that noise, focus on, you know, the immediate steps, the immediate things you need to get you know, to do to get better. And I think that's what served you and allowed you to, you know, go yeah. ahead, dominate, then make the USHL and have the career. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with knowing what's going on amongst your peers. It's like, you know, as a, there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel like I hear it being talked about and dwelled on a little bit too much by younger kids. And I don't think that if, if you're doing that, as long as you're using it as fuel to work your absolute hardest mm -hmm. and do everything you need to do, then great. But if you're using it as a, you know, as a, something that gets mentally distracting, then I think that you're doing it. Then you need to, and it's tough. It's tough to just not worry. If it's something you worry about or think about, it's tough just to say, okay, I'm not going to worry about that. You need to kind of accept that you're going to think of like those things, but, but just keep that main focus on what you really need to be doing to, to getting better because 17 to 20 are just like, that's when you kind of find out who's going to be able to do this for real and, and which who's going to fizzle out. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a good point. And I never really thought about that before where, you know, it's okay to, to look at what other players are doing as long as it's um, done in a productive way, you know, not, uh, not in a way that just crushes your self-confidence, but in a exactly. way that can you serve, like that can serve you as fuel, you know? Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. So why don't we move away from that a little bit and talk to us a little bit about, you know, playing in the, the AHL, the NHL, the KHL. Can you tell us again, similar to the question I asked you a while ago, you know, the, the similarities and the differences between uh, the level of hockey? Yeah. I mean, any, um, AHL, like it's so wild. Like I played there and I was just like, felt so like new. And I felt like it was like that experience was so like um, eye opening. And then before I was even ready 
to be comfortable there, I'd gotten called up to the NHL. And there I like took off and had like four or five goals in my first like couple weeks. And then when I came back to the AHL after like 30 games because of the Olympic break in 09, 2010, I just came back and dominated in the AHL because I just had so much confidence. And I just like, I looked at the league totally differently. And it was, it was uh, really shows you how like mental it can be or how like confidence can really serve a huge purpose. The AHL for me was kind of a, uh, it was kind of the, like I started out really unconfident Then I was playing really well there. Every time I'd go there, I'd, I'd score and I'd get a bunch of chances to score. And then like my third or fourth year, I went back there and I played longer there, lost some confidence, didn't play as well. And it was just kind of like a little bit like this. And I mean, that, but the AHL is a great league and I would put it right up there with the KHL. It's just different. Like AHL is kind of uh, younger guys, uh, more hard nosed, not, not quite as much, you know, open ice and skilled and still s- such a good league. And the KHL, I would maybe put kind of right on par, but the, the good teams in the KHL are, are probably better than the AHL. But then there's some bad teams in the KHL that I would put well below the AHL. And the AHL is more like p- more even. And the right. KHL's got more like a big gap between the best and the, and the worst. So if you're on a good team, you know, life's good. But if you're on the bad team, you know, like most nights you're, you're getting, you're getting beat up pretty good. Yeah. And that's, that's Russia. That's Russian hockey. Like the teams that have the money are up here. The teams that don't are down here almost, you know, year in and year out. And then the NHL is the NHL. It's just the best by far. And it's the easiest league to play in when you're playing with the best players, you know, they, they catch every, every, you know, bad pass you give them. And um, they make it look easy. But at the same time, there can be some really tough stretches where like things just aren't going your way. And uh, it's a super, it can be a super difficult league too. So um, it's, it's just a matter of like how you're kind of fitting in at that at any given time. For me, like life was great and then life was really tough and then it got good again and then, and then not so good. And then eventually you're out of it. So it was the best experience though, for sure. Like I would never trade it for anything because never thought I would make it that far in the first place. Yeah. It's a pretty cool accomplishment. So you, you touched on confidence there. How, um, how do players go about, you know, trying to get that confidence? Cause it's so important, right? It's when a player plays with confidence and when he doesn't, it's a totally different player. It's crazy how much yeah. the side of things. Goes yeah. Out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Those, those guys that are super good are the guys that even on their worst days, you know, they still, they still know they can do it and they still can like turn it on it. Like, they're not going to go in big stretches of it because they just know they're, they just, they never let themselves get too down on themselves. I would imagine like they just have that confidence and that's huge, but they've earned that confidence. You have to earn it in a lot of ways. You can't just like fake it. You can, I think faking it can work acutely to where like you need to get out of a slump. You can kind of fake some confidence and get out of it maybe by a, on a weekend basis or a week basis. And then let's say you have a good couple games doing that. Well, then now you're going to have real confidence. So but then the guys that just beat themselves up, you know, that I wouldn't, you know, that's not the way to go. It's too long of a season. And um, so, I mean, there's, I think you can fake it to a point where like you can kind of fake it as a point, as a reason to kind of get it for real. But then like the guys that are you in the, for the most part, you have to earn it by doing the things that you do well day in and day out. And just, you know, um, just having it kind of be a part of your life is like, you're a confident, you know, that you just have confidence in everything that you do. Yeah. So what are like earning confidence? I totally agree. What are like little things that you do to, you know, day in and day out to earn that confidence? The thing for me was always like after a tough game, I think the next day at practice, I would, I would be kind of a uh, quieter maybe, or just less confident or just a little bit more passive. But then like once that day came and went and it was, you know, I kind of just let it go after that. I think I gave myself time to, to, to dwell on it a little bit, but then I was the next day. I really, even later that night, I think I would really start to, I would do still, I still play, but I, I try to, you know, really my body would just, my brain would just kind of let it go and naturally. And then I was able to move on to the next game without dwelling on what happened before. It really was a fresh start for me. And usually, you know, that that's definitely helpful to be able to do that. If you're still dwelling on it, the next day or two or three days. I mean, it's just not going to do you any good. It really isn't. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And it's easier said than done because it's so easy it is to easy, for sure. dwell on it over and over again. But uh, somebody else I talked to that we interviewed, um, he basically said he had like a 30 minute rule. So he would basically dwell okay. on it hard for 30 minutes after the game and then he'd let it go. Now, mm-hmm. again, easier said than done, but I think that's a, a good kind of way to go. I like that. 
I like that a bit better. Like mine, mine would be more of a 12 hour rule or something <laughs> like that. But, um, you know, in Russia, it's different in Russia because you're an import and they expect so much of you that when you don't deliver, it's kind of like, well, then why are you here? Like, yeah. what are you doing for us? Why, why is an American playing over here? If you're going to not score, or you're not going to, we're going to lose. And then you're going to be a one that makes a mistake. It's like, what? So, but then when you do well, you know, it's like, okay, great. But like, that's maybe why I got to be like that kind of like a beaten dog from being over there, just getting my confidence shattered. Every time we played that, it was my fault. So that's not normal. Like in the, in the American league, in the NHL, like it's more of like, we're in this together as a team and Russia tends to be like, let's, let's see who we can blame for this. <laughs> so, so I think that has something to do with why I am the way that I am. Yeah. And I, had, I kind of had to get through that next practice to realize, okay, everything's okay. Yeah, for sure. Now, so let's uh, move a bit in a different direction here. So I love talking about leadership and I'm sure uh, it's something you probably like talking about as well. You know, what do you think makes a leader? And my second part to the question is who's the best leader you've ever played with and why? I think, I think what makes a good leader is a guy, first of all, that is truly when he plays, he's doing everything to help the team win. He's not doing things to, um, you know, solely for himself and you can just tell who's 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 doing that and who's not who genuinely wants to win the best leader i would say you know i was lucky enough to play with scott niedermeyer tim Oslani, ryan getzlaff uh so so getzlaff well, niedermeyer was the captain the first year getzlaff was the next year and like in their own different ways like i mean those guys it's hard to say like i mean i only played with them for a couple of years but it's like obviously those are the guys that i would say are the best because um in their different ways like niedermeyer was quieter but like when he said something, you, you stopped everything you did and you, you took it in because you knew it was important. And, um, gets left, just had this like confidence, like just, just a confidence. Like I've never seen where it's just ever, you know, everything it's like this guy does, he's good at, and it's just, there's no other option. You know, there was never going to be anything else. He just has life figured out. He just has that aura about him that I really like looked up to and the way he played and, um, uh, just everything he did, like he didn't worry about any outside stuff. He had, didn't seem to have any like superstitions even he would just go play and just be the best player. And, uh, and it was just like, so it was, it wasn't like, it was like intense, but at the same time, he just, it was like, he had so much confidence that he could just have this relaxation about him too. I don't know. And he just retired. I saw too, which is, yeah, he did. Which is crazy. What a career. But so those are the guys I kind of think of when I'm in a slump, I'm just like, you know, what would those guys do? What, what were they doing, you know, when I was when I was trying to take that in? I mean, playing in Russia, there's not a ton of leadership because these guys are a lot of the time more on the more on the, you know, I would say the selfish side. But there are some good leaders in Russia. Like there's a few. I, I can't draw on a bunch in the last nine years, unfortunately. You know, in the minor leagues, we had some awesome guys too, like awesome captains that that uh, I think they're just guys that bring the team together. Everyone likes and everyone like respects their opinion and they earn that's another thing that's been earned over time like confidence like those guys just earn it by just doing the right things every day which sounds easy but it really isn't no. and uh, and that's why they become where they are and that's why people look up to them because they want to kind of have that mentality maybe they don't even have the most skill but but they're like made it farther than they even should have or farther than the guys with more skill because of their attitudes and because of what people think of them. Yeah. Anyone who thinks being a leader is easy, <laughs> it's not, mm. it's uh, you have to consistently <laughs> yeah. in and day out. You have to do it. The, is. Um, it is. Uh, it is. I've, I've never been a guy who's, you know, I, in high school, I was a captain, but like in one year of in Russia, I was an assistant captain. But other than that, like, you know, I was always kind of a younger guy. Like I left college early and I, I was always a young guy in the minors and the NHL and, and like, even in Russia, it's like, it's like, so I'm not someone who can even say like, I have a ton of experience with that. I've always tried to kind of do it my own little way, quieter way, but the guys that are, that are expected that from them every single year, I mean, it, it does, it's gotta be a little bit of a burden to carry. And a lot of guys, those guys do it really well. No, for sure. For sure. It's, it's, it's definitely not easy. Like I had, one year where, where I was captain and, and I realized like day in and day out, you have, to, cause if you show, like, if you don't show up like on a given day, like all your teammates pick up on that and it just doesn't, uh, you know, it, it hurts the team, you know, so it's a day in and day out. So it's definitely, sure. it's definitely not easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, it is the one, you know, there's a few guys that guys are looking to, to make sure like everything's going to be all right. And so, yeah, that's what, that's what a captain's all about is just kind of giving guys the given, you know, confidence that they have confidence in you. And then, then maybe that helps them too to kind of play better just because they know that you're on their team, you're on their side. 
For sure. For sure. So moving more towards like the on ice stuff. So what do you think are like three, three things that, that players should focus on, on the ice? Do you mean like, uh, like if they like skill set or do you mean like during a game? Why not both? I kind of took it as skill set, but I mean, if it's just in general, three things, yeah. I mean, not, not, I wouldn't say it's the, I mean, as a skill thing, I would definitely say like, make sure you can skate in this, this day and age. Like if you, I'd really recommend like if you're, if, if you at all think you can improve skating or, or like your ability for for speed, like I would say that's really important. Um, but especially if you're a smaller guy like me, but, um, also definitely feel like it helps to like watch hockey and like watch the, how the NHL guys play and, and try to watch guys on their shifts and you can learn a ton that can help you that's not flashy at all, but it might be the reason why you score five extra goals or get five more assists or, or make, you know, plays that people want you on their team for. I'd say like for younger guys, I find they, they tend to hold on to the puck way too long and they, they don't make decisions fast enough. So I'd say work on your decision-making, making sure it's faster. I would say it doesn't always have to be even the perfect decision as long as it's faster. And just like at that next level, high school to junior, junior to college. Like if you're waiting too long and you had the, the perfect decision in mind, but you waited too long, it doesn't matter because it's not going to be good. Yeah. But if you can make a quick decision, I think it, it shows that you like are thinking the game faster. Um, so I'd say that's a big one. That's actually one of the biggest ones. So many guys have look amazing going around cones and, you know, doing drills, but in a game they just disappear. And that's the biggest thing I notice for Minnesota guys. They look amazing, great shots, great skaters, great hands. And you wonder how they don't score, you know, three goals every game in high school. And it's because they just don't make good decisions. And there's five guys out there trying to stop you. And you need to use your teammates and you need to like know when to use them and when to take it yourself. And too many guys just don't know when to do that. So that's a huge one. And then another one, a third one, I guess, depending on what position you are. But I mean, I think you, I mean, I mean, you could always work on your, but it's always comes back to mental. Like, like you can always work on just every time you're on the ice, you're really like fully engaged and you're fully there and you're not taking shifts off and you're, you're not like, I feel like genuinely my whole career, even in practice, I've given a hundred percent, like every single time it's gone and it just becomes a habit. So I'd say just having really good habits. Yeah, no, for sure. I, and I like the, what you mentioned about the kind of like the hockey IQ thing and making quick decisions yeah. and that I, I noticed that, you know, once you get to a certain age, let's say over 18 or over 19 or whatever, all players at that point at high levels, you know, are, are good skaters. They all have yeah. pretty good skills, but hockey IQ is usually the big separator. I would say, yeah. you know, when you yeah. get that, like, if you compare the, you know, the SPHL compared to the AHL compared to the NHL, usually hockey IQ and the quickness of the decisions and the little yeah. things, that's what usually is a separator. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's true. And like, you don't see like all these crazy fancy plays, like in, in, in summer hockey, when you go out and play, like you're right, those guys that are in the East coast or even lower, like they can look like really good out there with NHL guys and AHL guys when, when, when it's not a game situation, but then what changes is what well, it has to be, you know, that, that it, it's just different in a real game and the, the decisions you make have consequences. You can't just like laugh it off like you can in summer hockey. And it's the guys that can make those plays and make them fast. It's, I mean, I can tell right away by skating with a guy probably by like in a certain situation, what their decision is and how fast it is that like, okay, this guy isn't at, you know, the level, the highest level that he could be, you know, if, if, if he's taking too long, and even if, yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing for me is just like how long guys take to make their decisions uh, when they, when the puck's coming to them, you shouldn't, it shouldn't take you as like, if you get it and it requires a quick play, it needs to be a quick play and too many guys take too long. And that's just like, that's like, it's not even, it's not Nick picking. It's just like, if, if that's a problem that you feel like you have, then I don't even know how to tell you to improve it other than to watch guys and just maybe make go out of your way to try to make quicker plays, even if it's the wrong one, at least then you're making quicker plays and maybe you know, maybe it'll kind of get your brain to start thinking that way. No, for sure. I think, um, you know, hockey, hockey IQ, I believe can definitely be improved. And I think watching, you know, guys that are better than you, like in the NHL and all that, watching them do those little plays, I think you can try and pick up on that. And then you can practice yeah. and you're practicing in the games and stuff. Uh, there's guys that, there's guys that don't have like the size or the shot or some things that they don't make it to the NHL. 
but their IQ is super high. They go over to Europe and they make a lot of money and they do really well over there because they have that same IQ. They just lack the physical maybe features. A yeah. lot of times they're smaller guys and they're just this or they're, they're slower maybe, but like that hockey IQ is still really there to where they're awesome players. It's just the physical part of it. They never really got maybe to, yeah. to that level. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I see, like you said too, some guys that, um, you know, they don't have an overwhelming amount of skill. They're not exceptional skaters. They don't have an exceptional shot, but they play at a high level because they can think the game really well. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. There's guys that don't have a ton of skill, but even those guys can kind of make quick plays or stay within themselves and, and live, you know, and when they get their chances, they can do something. But um, there's guys that, yeah, like summer hockey, they probably look terrible. And you would never imagine they're in, the, they're in the NHL and the other guy is not even close because the other guy might look way better. But it, it really comes down to like, where are you putting the puck when it comes to you or where are you going on the ice when, when you don't have it as opposed, and I think probably more important than really anything. Yeah, for sure. All right. So I got one last question for you. So, you know, kind of for all the, the younger players out there that are developing, what's kind of one last piece of advice that, that you want to give them that we might have not touched on in our talk here? I think for I think for me, it's like just become as good of a player as you can be. Like I, I left college one year. I left college two years early because I looked at like I could have stayed. But I was like after two years of this versus two years, maybe in the AHL, like how much better will I be? And it's hard to say because like hockey's not golf where you like you put a score on the board. It's like hockey's hockey. It's subjective. It's it's like it's harder to like say. But you know if it's you, you know like wh- which route would make you better. Well, for me, I was like, I know I'll be a better player if I if I make this jump. And like, so I'm not saying jumping is always the right decision because like staying in high school until I was 18 was probably the best thing for me too. Instead of jumping into juniors too early. And so you kind of have, but I would just say whatever you genuinely think year to year to be your best player by the end of that next year, the best player you can be, then do that. And, um, that like ladder, you'll just keep climbing it instead of thinking five steps ahead. And then you don't even make it past the first, you know, the first step. And sometimes really good players, I think can get too ahead of themselves and then they become average players. And I think they just need to be, how good can I be by the end of that year, whether it's picking up strength, speed, uh, hockey awareness, like not even scoring goals and assists, just like what is going to make me the best product uh, that, that I can bring to teams that, because that's essentially what you are. Like you're just a, you're a product. You're one thing that these teams are going to either want or not want. And um, so that's, that's what, that's what I would say, because that's kind of how I dumbed it down to a point where each year I just tried to get as good as I possibly could. And that would just lead into really good results instead of worrying about results. And then just hoping you can score 30 goals somehow without really thinking about how to do it. Yeah. For sure. I think that's a great guiding question to, to base your, your career uh, around. So I think that's a great way to end it off. Uh, Dan, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Love yeah, having you on here. And uh, we hope to maybe see you again one day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It was fun. Awesome. Good stuff. All right, guys, that is it for the interview here. We hope you guys got some sort of value out of this uh, interview here. I know I definitely learned a few things and I hope you guys learned some stuff as well. If you did get value out of this interview here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell if you're new here. And if you haven't already too, if you like this video, consider destroying that like button if you haven't already because it really goes a long way to promote the video to other people so they can see it too. All right, and also too, throughout the video, if you have any questions, anything you wanna talk to us about whatsoever, consider hitting or dropping a comment down below or sending us an email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. All right, guys, that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on that next one.